Hey on guys, Amir here from Adonis Athletics for another instalment of um, the Adonis Eye. What we're going to do today is uh, have a look at uh, uh, Pete's deadlift. Uh, Pete was uh, used to be a, a bodybuilder and has, has recently come into powerlifting. And um, from his uh, bodybuilding days, he had had... Uh, uh, a number of back issues, which uh, which came about, and and uh, we we worked on fixing those. And he actually had four disc bulges. And uh, everybody always says people with disc problems can never deadlift again. Well, in fact, it was it was the deadlifts that uh, that fixed him. Um, and uh, now he's back into training. This this was the other day he was taking his, he was uh, trying out his maxes so that we can go on a new training cycle. So what we'll do is uh, first we'll have a look at uh, look at his lift. Um, in slow motion uh, just to show you how it was now um, keep in mind that he's been off deadlifting for quite some time so obviously his muscular patterning and everything like that is going to be way off um, and the, the techniques obviously not going to be uh, as clean as as needed he pretty much muscled that up all the way up but because he's so strong he managed to get it that was uh, 240 on the bar so he hasn't deadlifted for ages his previous max was, max was 250 before he did his um, uh, before he had to stop because of uh, back problems, and uh, this is uh, this whole time he pretty much has done, done uh, zero deadlifting, and through rehab exercises and stuff like that, um, we uh, we managed to get him back. Obviously, you know, light deadlifting, but nothing like above 80, 85 percent. Uh, so let's have a look at. Uh, his his technique here. What I want to um, have a look at today is uh, people's different uh, limb lengths and how that affects their um, their positioning. So, uh, like I said, he hasn't done deadlifts in, in ages, and so his technique is obviously going to be a little bit out. He's he's lost his motor patterning, and uh, the position that he sets up in is not uh, is not opt optimal. So let's have a look. Let's have a talk about how to, to set up for someone like this. Uh, Pete is characteristically a short torso and long femur lifter, right? Um, and these kind of lifters need to need to set up in a in a particular way. As you'll see here, and this, this came up the other day on, on the Facebook fan page uh, when I had put up uh, uh, another deadlift video. As you see here in this video, as he lifts, his his hips, his hips go up a fair bit before the bar actually starts to come off the ground. That's where the bar starts to move, right? So what you would do is, what you want to do is, you want to train the body or train the lifter to lift at that position. But the problem here is that because he started from this pulling from this position, when he when he uh, got to that position where the bar came up, he lost a fair bit of tension, right? So if he had started, say, there, and he started to pull, he actually would have pulled much cleaner uh, the whole way. What he also needs to needs to work on is um, he, on his upper back strength. So this needs to uh, stay a little bit, a little bit tighter and a little bit more straight. And uh, he needs to... The, the trade-off here is with this technique, starting on this position with the with the hip here instead of like lower down here, uh, is that his lower back and hamstrings need to be now much much more stronger to be able to make this technique work. But he sort of has no choice. Um, in order to be the best puller he can be, given his biomechanics, uh, sorry, given his um, limb length, like his tor torso length and femur length and so on, that's how he needs to pull. So if he was to start from there, he would be able to, let's go back here. If he was to start from there and maintain tightness, he his hip wouldn't continuously rise like it is now before the bar comes off the ground. So... And, you know, now that he's back into training, we'll be working on getting his upper back much stronger, his his lower back much stronger, and, and especially just the total posterior chain. So uh, this is the difference when when uh, 
some people argue that oh, some deadlifters need to start with their hips much higher um, rather than lower. Uh, it's true, but only in, in cases where people have uh, much longer femurs than uh, in relation to their torso length. And that's the case here with Pete. Uh, as you notice in his lockout, he starts to uh, he starts to round a fair bit. Well, I mean, he stays rounded from the get-go, and that makes the lockout um, uh, a little bit harder. So here he has to he has to sort of grind it up. And he finally gets the lift, uh, but it is it is not as clean as you'd want it to be. So this is literally his first session back from deadlifting after a few months off. So that's pretty good for somebody who's had four disc bulges and uh, has gone back into uh, training. So uh, to recap, basically, if you if you are a lifter who has uh, long femurs, shorter torso, you want to start with your hips a little bit higher to start off with. Um, say about there where the shoulder is still in line with the bar more or less right and um, and your chest you want your chest to be a little bit higher than it is here uh, you really got to work on uh, reinforcing the posterior chain to be able to get momentum from this point upwards um, so we'll, we'll uh, pit is back into it now so uh, we'll, we'll uh, track his progress and over time get back to um, get back to you guys and, and let you know how he's going with his uh, deadlifting thank you